next door neighbor moved in. He was the starting goalkeeper for the men, U.S. men's national team. The kickstart of my career at VaynerMedia was playing basketball with Gary and Age. I'm just chilling in my apartment or whatever. I just put on skate videos. It's been a special thing for me and my father to connect and bond over. Two friends, Jake and Zach, that we hold each other accountable in terms of life and pushing each other and trying to be great. And then my cousin Greg, influencer relations, creator relations, talent relations, Gary VIP kind of. So you were talking about just before that you were up snowboarding. Yeah. And where were you, sorry? I was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Wow. Yeah. So I've got a, like I live in um, Seattle, so I've got a little mountain that's about an hour away from me. Yep. And so the most I've ever got like powder wise was maybe like a foot and that was like a, a super stoked and being Australian, never seeing it. Yeah. Then I went up to another mountain. A friend took me up and he said, oh, this is going to be amazing. It's called Stevens. And it was about, I don't know, two or three feet of powder. And I died. Like it's, I was in there. I got stuck. It's had, a whole different situation. Oh, it's so different. I was like, I had to lay on my snowboard and like well, surf my way out. It gets dangerous. It's no yeah. joke. Like yeah, it, yeah. it's no joke when you get to that much snow. And it's a completely different experience. It like, fully is, yeah. It's like playing a different sport in, yeah. in some ways. Um, it was amazing. I mean, I don't even know how this is possible. But I've, I've been, I have a very special feeling about Jackson Hole. And I go out there with my cousin the last couple of years. And, yep. um, you know, as life goes forward, we're able to spend less and less time together. But we, we make a point to go out. And, yeah. Um, it snowed. We landed on Friday afternoon. It proceeded to snow 30 inches in the next 20 hour, 20, 20 plus hours or what have you. They closed all of Jackson Hole Mountain outside of the single kitty lift for the first time in almost 10 years. No way. It was then a three hour opening delay on Sunday because they got another eight inches. So we, we boarded Sunday. Monday, I think they got something like six feet in the span that they were they, we were there. And then I was supposed to fly out Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Yeah. And it snowed another 18 inches. And I wasn't able to leave till Wednesday. It was the most snow I had seen in that short period of time. No, and it's no so way. crazy because it was almost too much snow, which yeah, is like yeah, something yeah. you can never... Because in the months leading up... You know, we're yeah. texting all day, like, it yeah, yeah, snow, yeah. like, looking at everything, <laughs> like, I hope it snows, and then yeah, you yeah. just got dumped on so you much. You got snow. too many wishes in. You, like, Correct. dumped too many leprechauns like, or something. That's exactly right. It was like, <laughs> when the leprechauns attack, you think they're a good thing, and then all of a sudden, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. So you're going to watch soccer this weekend? Are you a big soccer fan? Yeah, big, big, uh, you know, proper football, footy, whatever we call it yep. here in America, soccer. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big passion of mine. Yeah, um, yeah. So, European football, to be specific. Like, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask. Less, I mean, I, I followed the MLS a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I, that, that's what really got me into the, the sport My uh, growing up uh, when I was very young, maybe six, seven, eight next door neighbor moved in he was the starting goalkeeper for the men, u.s men's national team and the metro stars at the time his yep. name was tony miola and he became like a very close family friend and almost like a you know an uncle to me at that time and um that that definitely got me in and then my good friend's father is the commissioner of the mls and so i was always around the game early and then that was like the late 90s and cristiano ronaldo and the manchester united run and all that and um so I've always kind of followed it. And then to be frank, over probably the last seven years or so through work, I get to meet and, and build relationships with different players. And, and it's been a special thing for me and my father to connect and bond over. And we've been oh, able wow. to go over to London uh, a few different times and, and check some different matches. And it's just something that we really enjoy doing together. Yeah. Um, so on Sunday, I support Manchester United. My father supports uh -oh. Liverpool. Um, I had a good buddy that, that played for Liverpool, and he got us some tickets to go over to Manchester, and we watched Manchester United-Liverpool um, at Old Trafford, and that was just a very special day. So my dad supports Liverpool, but this Sunday is one of the biggest matches of the year, Liverpool versus Manchester City. 
and those are the one and two top teams in England. Yeah. Manchester City's, you know, the best team in the world, you know, at, at the moment. Yeah. And so um, I haven't seen him in almost a month. And so I think we'll get together and watch the match. Oh, uh, that's That's really always cool. fun. And I'm a morning person. So the morning weekends work very well for me. Like if there's a 7 a.m. match, I'm up and we'll have it on, cup of coffee. Like I enjoy oh, that a lot. Oh, God. I'm the opposite. I'm not a morning person, but the only times I would is when Street League is on. And so I'll get up and I'll be like, oh, watch it. But usually I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's perfect. It's like a little background. Dude. Like, yeah. Catch one eye. <laughs> like, I get back to sleep. Or something fun happens. You wake up, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like roll over, turn the TV on, go back to bed. It's always good for that. So where do you grow up that all these people – like are around you so when i grew up i had yeah. a crackhead two doors down that tried to sell her child yeah. so i didn't uh, yeah. the people that are like running the mls is not like <laughs> around yeah. where i was respect I, I grew up um i grew up in a town that i attribute a lot of who i am to my identity and the education that i've received over the years uh montclair new jersey um okay and montclair is 12 miles directly west of Manhattan. Um, okay. Direct train lines in and out, and almost kind of the first, I'd say, like suburb outside of Manhattan, as you know, you kind of have this uh, right in New Jersey, Hoboken, Jersey City, Fort Lee, what have you, that are a little bit more city extensions mm-hmm. right ac- across the water. Um, yep. There's the Watchung Mountain Range kind of sits just on the left, uh, on the west side of. Um, of Manhattan and it's it sits right on there um, and is a very diverse town a very kind of forward um, innovative town it's the first town in the country to have a recycling program I think one of the first towns wow. to have um, you know mixed race uh, school bus system um, oh wow yeah my high school I think was like I think it was something like 50% black 50% white public oh, schooling cool. Uh, my father is one of nine. They all grew up in the town there. So I, I was just as a young age, just like you, ex- part of a, a larger community, if yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and because of the proximity to New York City, oh, just a lot a of um, entrepreneurial business folks, uh, food, you know, just uh, there's a really, you know, well-known art museum there, just like cities continue to expand and and obviously as yep. time goes it gets further and further and these cities get larger um i'm reading a book right now about it uh, called metropolis but um yeah i'm i'm very fortunate to have been raised there there's an immense diversity in wealth That's um, awesome. race school of thought you know republicans democrats and it, there was just a hodgepodge of, of all these different things going yeah, on yeah yeah um that taught me a lot of different things and That's exposed I, kind of people are just people, you know, yeah. is what I learned very early on. Yeah. Like, I, that's one of my favorite things. It's just like, everyone's just, everyone just trying to make it through and have a good time. You know correct. what I mean? No matter where like, you're at in the chasm. No matter. At, yeah. 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 Uh, so I, the town that I would call home is this free town uh, in oh. Western Australia. And, it's kind of like very like sort of artsy, but like it's just that, that kind of hodgepodge like you're saying, right? Like you can get a little bit of everything in there that you wanted, but there's a uh, a fair bit more diversity with both um, sexual orientations, race, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, where I live now, there's a little bit of diversity, but it's like not. It's um, a very like rich suburb. Understood. I stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so. But when I go and play pickleball, there is just everybody there. And I just, I sometimes just look over and there's like, and I, at this point, I know every, like a bunch of people, but we have like on the east side where we are, we have one of the most popular little three courts. And so a lot of people come through there. Yeah, coming through, yeah. And sometimes I look through and I'll be like, there is just these people like chatting to each other that I know would not cross paths, like with their like, maybe jobs but like just in general and they're all just chatting and having a good time yeah and i just look over and sometimes and i smile and be like D- i feel so stoked right now it's the to best. have that you know it's um it's a beautiful thing about sport that it's just a very equalizing environment mm-hmm. the only reason i have a 
the kickstart of my career at VaynerMedia was playing basketball with Gary and AJ and how I showed oh, up wow. in a competitive nature and the bond that we built around competing against each other or being on the same team and wanting to beat people. Yeah, like, who's better at a U3? Uh, I would say AJ is probably the most talented yep. basketball player. Gary is the most tenacious. Um, <laughs> that, that's say, not surprising. But I would say I'm the young, youngest one and the most <laughs> in shape at this moment. So, you know, uh, today I would say I would probably be the first pick out of the three. But yep. AJ, I think, has the most natural talent for sure. He's got mm. a crazy jump shot. And, you know, five years ago that was a non-debate question. But... AJ has mm. three kids and uh, a oh, home yeah, yeah. and uh, operates a big business. And Mate, I, I have a little bit more free time to get in the kids. gym. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, I can confidently uh, say that. And, and But Gary, I think, will be playing basketball, you know, till he's not here anymore. And it matters a lot to us. Oh, yeah. I love that. I So I we skateboarded a lot. It's Friday right now. Yeah. Tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. I'm playing basketball with Gary. Dang. That's yeah. And what I was about to say, which is funny because yeah. you're, you're about to segue into skateboarding. Yeah. And I actually looked back at our, you know, our, our ch- chat history. Yeah. We've, we've been in touch for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> you and I. And yeah. predominantly, I think it was around skateboarding was a lot of our early conversations. Yeah. And I have such an affinity towards skateboarding as someone that, grew up around skateboarding a lot a lot of my friends were skateboarders I just could never skate like I I just never had it in me so I was the guy always hanging on the Uh. side with the skateboard (laughs) doing the thing but you know we had a brand called Halo and made hoodies and screen printed and this is in middle school you know and so like so much of like okay well how do these dynamics work another person joins the crew how do they fold in you oh, know yeah, and it's yeah. just about like can this person hang and be a hang. good time yeah. and be a value yeah. add to the overall ecosystem yeah doesn't matter who they are doesn't matter their background doesn't matter nah. their talents yeah. anything but like are they bringing a unique taste and flavor and yeah. kind of building the overall thing and yeah. to this day i you know, at 1.37 p.m. when I was um, in charge and kind of running the brand there, um, I thought a lot about it as kind of this skate culture brand. And I have a very dear friend, um, Pedro, who is an accomplished skateboarder that's using skateboarding. We had a, a, a content program called Pedro Eats Everything. It's still on 1.37 p.m. YouTube. Yep. Where it was a combo of, I believe, skateboarding is art. So mm. when you're, you're performing or, or, or skating, that is no different than a painter painting or, uh, or a that musician That is so singing, funny you say that. You know, and, and so the, the show was he'd skate. Yep. He'd skate to a place and go to a park, and then he'd conduct an interview with someone. Yep. And then he'd skate to a restaurant and sit down and talk about the food and go in the kitchen and put the restaurant on and yep. then go skate off. And all the transitions of all of this was like just natural skating, yeah, you know, yeah. moving oh, to God, these I places. Love street um, and it was it was really special. It was cool. And, yeah. And I, so yeah. I have a question. I, we I've got ten questions to get into because cool. I got the random ones. But I love I'm loving this. It's really hard. Uh, so funny enough, on the painting thing, when I was younger, I used to write for a newspaper, and I'm pretty sure I'm illiterate, especially back then. And so I would like write, but one of the things I wrote for them was. Um, skateboarding is an art paint your own picture and like went through like the way skateboarders look at things yeah is unique so i was gonna i was wondering since you were uh like a sideline like you might you probably rolled around on a skateboard right Correct. but you want like yeah, that's doing, all like, i a, had in me <laughs> yeah but when you were hanging out with your friends were you going hey what do you think about hitting this rail or what were you thinking about hitting those stairs? So your yeah. brain is working like ours kind of thing? Of course, very much yeah. so. Um, and I still think about it now. And even so, I mean, I remember vividly, vividly the day at our middle school when they put the new railings in with the cement blocks, you know, and like yeah. that, that would, you couldn't use them. And, yeah, and then yeah. when I ever, still to this day, I see a ledge that 
you know, has those little nubs that have been put in, right? Like, yeah, it's just a always push and pull of, of yeah, kind yeah. of what's happening there. And and then when you walk by a place and you see, you know, a waxed ledge, and you just <laughs> think about all the moments and memories oh. that have probably occurred in those spaces, you know, yeah. it like hits me. Um, so very much so, but also so, made sure I had a speaker and was handling the tunes <laughs> or had a little bit of extra food in the backpack for the boys type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, two things on that. One, the way I soothe myself when I'm going to sleep is I think about doing a fakey ollie to a switch nose grind pivot and out. Never could do it. Never could do it. But It's crazy you say that. Why? Because I guess the old thing was like, you know, you think about the cow jumping over or, or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. I haven't thought about this in years. When I was young, when I couldn't sleep, I would do the exact same thing. No way. Yeah, like like just like a transition, and you'd count, yeah. and I'd count. Oh, and that's how I'd fall asleep. Yeah, it just gives me like this feeling, and I'm like, okay, okay, and then I'm asleep. Yeah, that is that's bonkers. Amazing. I wow. Know. I, but also. Beautiful. Have you looked at, like, you, you're so busy, so you're probably not up to it as much as I am, but the girls' skate scene right now feels very much like the 90s skate scene. Or like uh, the like, uh, mid-2000s. There's some really young, really oh. talented skaters, right? Well, there's one back in Fremantle where I'm from, and so I met her when she was six, and she was ripping then. She's now doing 540s in these, like, 16-foot bowls. And I'm like, when I was, like, she's, I think she might be nine now. And I'm like, when I was nine, I was on a board and I'm like, oh, I'm so cool. Like, there's like no the way. Walmart board, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no way can you do this. So, Crazy. Yeah. She was doing I, I, 360s I, at six. Yeah. I've only seen it a little bit from afar because every now and again, the X Games stuff comes up. and Yeah, yeah. You know, there's also... I feel like just so much talent coming out of Japan in that oh. world and scene as well. They I like I have no idea how or why. Like Brazil had a yeah, time and they still yep. pump out like legends as well. Yep. But like Japan has just got so much after Yudo came out and it's like everyone was like, Oh, I could do that. Oh. And then now there's girls doing like uh, the late street league. She did a um crooked grind nolly heel out of like a down ledge. And I was like, come on, like so good. Unbelievable. It's fun just how things progress, you know. I know. I like And also these are just young sports. Like if you really go there. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like the history. Burton, you know, you watch a documentary about snowboarding. Like the creation of snowboarding is only we're within a generation or a generation and a half. You know? Yeah, right. The guy who invented Burton's still alive, right? Correct. And, yeah. And they were not allowed to go to the mountain, you know, yeah. like, and we're just making these little boards and, and yeah. what have you. And so, yeah. But I'm not sure, actually. I want to double check that because he may have passed. Oh, did he? Let yeah, see. let's have, hang on. Jake Burton Exclaimer. Carpenter. No, he's, he's still kicking. Oh, yeah. No, no. I apologize. Nope. Oh. <laughs> He's teetering he passed, right now. He, Is that what you're saying? Jake Jake Burton passed in uh, in 2019 at 65 I think you years might have of age. Again. Did I? I'm back. Oh, okay. Oh, it's 65. Yeah, that, I guess that's why maybe they did that documentary. Yeah. Three children, native of New York, grew up in Cedarhurst, New York. One of the innovators of the modern day snowboard. Imagine having that to your name, <sighs> Jeeves. Burton is like. Iconic. Yeah. yeah. But so is Birdhouse. Oh, God. You know? I um, I would give a hand job to anyone to get a signature from Tony Hawk. Like, But I, I don't want it to be like someone sends me a board. I want to be like, hey, Tony, Tony. how are you? Exactly. Like, yeah, like it's <laughs> like saying minutes. day one song. Like there's so oh. many. Rodney Mullen. Totally. Cream Campbell. Yeah. Oh, God. Cream Campbell, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 a lot of times, my background, like what I do, if I'm just chilling at my apartment or whatever, I just put on skate videos. Oh, do you still? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Just so like soothing, I, you know, not like paying full attention. Just oh yeah, 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 yeah. Type stuff. Yeah. What was your favorite skate video? That's a tough question for me. 
Um, I don't know. I, what comes to my mind is, and I'm so bad at like recalling my memory, so shit. Yeah, me is too. Is it the girl one where he landed and the stuff blew up behind him? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, that she was Lack Eye. That, yeah. Uh, 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 Lack Eye, that was. So that, there's this company, ADB Collectibles. Yep. yep. That if you. Gave know, away they, pieces of the. Uh, correct. Yeah. So they did um, they did a, a bit from that scene, which was like the wood pieces, to my understanding, yep. from that. Um, yeah, right was the video, yeah. right? No, yeah, right was the was girl video. one. The Lack Eye video, what was it called? Yeah, right had all the imaginary stuff. I'm pretty sure the Lack Eye yeah. video is the one that exploded. And what's his name? Owen Wilson was in... One of he them. was in yeah right yeah so mind you mind you anyone could fact check me on this and be like you've got it mixed up and wrong yeah like, I, exactly that's yeah. where i'm like <laughs> I, I try not to but my favorite are the videos that matt colella and das used to make you know yeah. at mount hebron back in the day and all yeah. of that has led me here because that was from 12 that was 2003 2004 and we had video cameras and editing you yeah. know and how were you editing yours? I had to do mine from VCR to VCR. So it'd be like pause, yeah, record, pause, record, pause, record. That and I'd was, do like shot videos was, like that. That was, I think, just, I think we had just entered the phase of digital. So it was like Sony camcorder. Oh, yeah. Plug into the Dell Tower. Some form of like, I feel like it was QuickTime or... Oh, yeah. Or some form of video editing software to then the external CD, DVD, rewritable uh, drive. And then wow. you take the disc and you could stamp it. Or, you know, there, then uh, that was all like CompUSA. I was buying all those things. <laughs> oh, you know, you'd get the stack of blank discs. Yeah, yeah. You know, like on the thing. And then you could once you burned it you could like then had a printer label that you could put on it oh you know? and then wow. you get like the orange blank cases yeah and yeah bang bang yeah. them out you know do you still have those dvds somewhere oh, in my good, probably good. my parents had it yeah you know i've got this one tape that has maybe a minute and a half of me skating and I keep it everywhere. Like I've traveled to Australia, I've traveled back, yeah. and I keep it just because I'm like, I want to get that clip off there one day. That's amazing. Yeah we, yeah, we did a lot of home videos growing up. So like over the shoulder, yeah. cool, you know, <laughs> yeah. with the VCR. And my dad, yeah. when I'd have birthday parties, always would film and interview my friends from a young age. Oh, no way. Yes, yeah, so we have all that footage. And, um, and then we used to do, me and my friends on the street, we would do like, movie remakes oh that is so i dropped for half a cool. second but yeah like big daddy we like would remake big oh. daddy with like <laughs> us as you know characters and whatnot. yeah yeah, and yeah I, I think that is all what kind of led to where i'm at now it, so all i hear when i hear that is i'm like oh so you're when tyler's 50 he's gonna have a documentary made about him because he's got the collection of all the stuff that they can use they don't yeah. have to CGI it. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's funny. I journal a lot. I oh, yeah. Write, I write a lot. And that's what I think about with that. Yeah. It's like, if I pass one day or what have you, I want, like, my life documented somewhere. Yeah. I think about that in my sketchbooks. I'm like, I have a pile of sketchbooks. And I'm like, yeah. I just want someday someone to be like, hey, wow. these are worth, like, not worth something monetary, be like, worth something to, like, look through, like. That would be amazing to me. So, would you like to jump into the 10 questions? Yeah, let's do otherwise, it. Let's do it. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'll, I'll chew your ear off all day. Go to the questions. <laughs> let's do it. No, um, all right. Breathe underwater or fly? Fly. Fly. Why? Uh, flying speaks to me more than water. Like, mm. 
the ocean. I like sitting on the beach a, a lot. Yeah. I've just never been a big, like, jump in the water person. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm skinny and, like, get cold. But, like, I, I've <laughs> never been an extended. I like to take a bath. Yeah, a yeah. warm bath. But, like, <laughs> this whole cold plunge movement, you will oh. not catch me in, nah, nah. in any capacity. I, do like, you know what's funny? It's my knees and like that, like playing pickleball. I'm like, oh yeah, like uh, like uh, maybe I can like get into this pop plunge. And then I see people doing. I'm like, I just see pain. Yeah, like I don't I'm good. see it. Like I'm yeah. good off that. Like, yeah, I, I, I'll I, go I, have yeah, a shower I'm, and I feel great. Correct. And yeah. I'll hit the sauna at high heat for 35 minutes. I love that. <laughs> I don't have interest in jumping into a cold pool. Like I'm in control of my life. I don't need that. And I believe in creating your own suck and struggle. Yeah, yeah. Not at all. And I no. travel a lot. I fly a lot. So, like, in a weird place in my brain, I'd love to get, like, a pilot's license at some point and be able to just pop in a little whatever. That would be cool, huh? I, I've heard, or not heard, a, a good friend of my mother's just did, like, two weeks in a small prop plane flying all across Australia. Oh, no way. Yeah, and I heard that's a pretty intense trip because there's some real barren land out there like well yeah can, yeah yeah so that know. um i can't speak for flying so i have no idea what it's be like to go around there but i imagine that if you got stuck somewhere and they didn't know like they even had like a 200 kilometer radius of you then you're pretty fucked to yeah. be honest yeah so so that it just that was a very simple answer to me like yeah I'd rather be able to just pop up and fly and fly home right now or fly wherever or yeah. move around or head up, you know, 5,000 feet above New York City and check shit out than yeah. like explore I, the deep. I think of flying, I'm like, oh, that's easy travel. Oh, hang yeah. on, I'll be there in five minutes. Oh, Correct. man, but traffic's this. And I'm like, no, but I can I'll fly. Go, yeah. <laughs> I can fly. I can fly. I can yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you do to pay the bills? What do I do to pay the bills? I work at a company called VaynerX. I've been here for almost 11 years, um, and I do my best every single day to provide immense value to the company in exchange for the salary that I receive. Oh, wow. That's a very adult answer. Did, uh, did they script that one for you? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I just, from early on, and then the second equation of that is that I don't, I think that to be successful in a, um, employer employee relationship yep as an employee you need to go out of your way to extract non-monetary value from the company mm -hmm. right so, so you can look at it as i do x in exchange for x yep that typically leads to behavior no different than school which is every year you got to you move up a grade and you get a new title and all of that. Mm -hmm. But that's not interesting to me in any capacity. And so I, and with journaling, like for me, it was always about what else are you getting from doing this? Yeah. Challenges, learnings, network, new relationships, learning what you don't like, learning what you like, you know, um, because otherwise it just can become you do X and they pay oh. you for X. You yeah. know, and I always think, well, if you want to get ahead, you should be trying to deliver a value above and beyond the monetary, and then in exchange, find ways to extract. Oh, we're frozen Actually, a little bit right there. Find ways to extract things that are not your paycheck, and then from there, yeah, yeah. I, I, I at this point in my life, am a fairly aggressive. Uh, like investor. And what I mean by that is I've been very close to tech. I mean, Apple is like something that has very much defined my life. I remember exactly where I was when I watched, you know, Steve Jobs iPhone keynote. My father, we had Dell computers early on. Mm -hmm. And then once Jobs went back to Apple and started putting out some of these cool things, also in our school, in Middle school, sixth grade tech class, they had all the colored Apple oh, computers, yeah, you know, yeah, which yeah. was like crazy. And then um, additionally, yeah, my dad, at a young age, I was in middle school and my dad just fell in love with the company and had that moving computer. So wow. I invested pretty aggressively in Apple, like when I was 16, when the iPhone came out. Um, wow. 
and just believe in innovation and communication and tech and marketing. Obviously, NVIDIA is like going bananas right now. Yeah. Which, you know, it's funny. I'll say this. Bitcoin hit an all-time high today. You know what also hit an all-time high today? Or actually, I don't know if that was today, but it was within the last week. Gold. So, like, the... the gold? The gold. Oh, wow. Gold is trading at the highest price it's ever traded. No way. And I say that to counterbalance, like, tech and growth and newness in a world yep. where, like, gold. Wow. So... Uh, I heard one time that if you invested in certain Lego pieces, that grows in value more than what gold grows in. Lego pieces? Yeah, like or Lego, like Lego figures. Like, There's some crazy figures or sets that are sets, super old. Lego sets. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean collectibles. Like whether that's another. Here's another anecdote: Rolex, which is yep. a hundred thirty year old company. 130 year old business just closed its m most successful year ever from a revenue standpoint it's never been hotter even with all the like everyone having apple watches yeah wow. and so the thing about legos the thing about collectibles the thing about comics the thing about all these things is that the thing about art and why a lot of these markets continue to flourish now a little bit of it's happening Right now, we've seen risk turn back on. Obviously, COVID, there was you know this influx in capital, risk turn back on, election year, seemingly Trump versus Biden. If Trump goes back in office, he's a little bit more you know aggressive in terms of pushing certain things. So those things are happening. But on these collectibles, the reason Lego sets are that, you might see that comment, and I can't fact check that one way or the other, but that's happening yeah. in sports cards, that's happening everywhere, is that yeah. now, Long ago, not even long ago, 20 years ago, in order to show someone the piece of art that you bought as an identifier of yourself and who yeah, you yeah. are and flex that to the world, you had to yeah. host a dinner party or you had to put it in a gallery and say that you owned it or donate it somewhere to, to say, look at who we are and boast about who you are. Now you can just post it on the internet and everyone in the world sees, sees you have it. it. So wow. things are further and further in demand. Because when you buy a Rolex, you can then put it online and any someone that you're trying to attract may see that and come your way. Before, uh, you had to buy the Rolex and go to the bar. Do you have a Rolex? I do not have a Rolex, no. I don't need that. Yeah. I definitely no, don't. No, I don't. I, no. I, and I used to have an Apple Watch. Yep. I, I don't wear that anymore. I wore an Aura ring for about two years or so, which is like sleep data and tracking. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... I'm so connected and always on that you want to be I, I'm also from trying it? to remove. And also when it comes to health and sleep and those things, for a long time, I was like, I want the data and I want to be able to eventually upload the data and use the AI systems or whatever to learn about a lot of these things. Yep. But I'm actually in a phase where I'm really trying to lean on gut and intuition and just really pay more attention to my own understanding of what's happening and yep. react and respond to that. So... Uh, when you're doing stuff at uh, Vayner X, right? Mm -hmm. When you walk away, how do you know that you've felt like you've had a good day? Because I'm like, uh, I don't know exactly what you're doing there, so you can speak on that if you want. Mm -hmm. Like the last time I sort of really dug in was you were Gary V's executive assistant, yep. and that's how you sort of started there, right? Next to Indra, I think. Yeah, India, and her. India. Yep, India. India yep. was there. Yep. Um, yeah. So currently, I at VaynerX, I oversee all of our creator and talent relations. Oh, so wow. So influencer relations, creator relations, talent relations, Gary VIP kind of personal relations. And that really birthed when I became his uh, assistant after being his younger brother's assistant for yep. about two years. And just the proximity to those guys and helping scale his relationships and obviously his time and how you treat people. I have a uh, hospitality and service background. I grew up working mm -hmm. in restaurants. That's what I studied in school. And that's how I think about everything. Service, mm -hmm. hospitality, treat people, you know, the way that you want to be treated and that will impact your business in I the same way. Can't agree with that anymore. 
So your question was, how do I, at the end of the day, when I leave, know that I've had a good day or yeah, had an not so like, I'm like day? I've yeah. How you when? So I think a lot of people when they think that someone's working in such a big company, mm-hmm. and so I used to work at Nintendo, and mm-hmm. sometimes you leave there and you're like, I worked so hard today, and yeah, I'll I'll, I'll um, say it like this. Okay. I think everything comes down to communication, and. When I leave, are there things that I should have communicated that I didn't? Or did I communicate the things that I know I should have? Because everyone every day has something that they can and should communicate that they may not. And that's where anxiety comes from, right? And Mm. stress and what have you. And a lot of times it's about not being able to deliver the thing that someone is expecting of you or maybe you don't have the bandwidth or time to get to and rather than communicating that or you messed up in some capacity or made a mistake or error and then rather than running at it and communicating it you kind of start to create this how can i work around that how can i avoid that issue and that's something that i think when i go to leave it's like did i actually run at the issues and problems or did i scour away from that yeah and then yeah, the yeah. next part of it is like well if you didn't have a good day like you got tomorrow to have it as well yeah because yeah. then it snowballs when you beat yourself up i didn't do the thing i didn't do the thing yeah i suck you know well, bah, bah. and then you just start to take actions and motions to mask all of, all of that yeah 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 versus just doing it yep so uh just to be on some fun stuff here and um, but maybe people that I, because I've been watching sort of Gary V stuff and then seeing you guys like Ask Gary V and all that sort of stuff. And as you said, we've spoken for the last seven years. You've got to do some pretty amazing stuff, right? We spoke about going to like London to watch soccer games. Mm-hmm. When you look back at this and you go, dang, I got to do this within the company or I got to do that what is something that sticks out to you like a like a thorn on a rose not not bad but like just sticks out our engagement with K-Swiss for sure um, oh wow All probably right. specifically the clouds and dirt sneaker that yeah we wow um, I mean Gary let me just like design the colorways and come no up way. with a lot of it yeah like full go I mean so the oh, clouds and dirt so campaign fun. was like super cool and, you know, that's the work. But if I'm just being super honest, it's like some of my closest friends, you know, uh, the relationship that I have with Gar- with, a- with D-Rock and Andy, the three yep. of us started within, I think, two, three months of each other at the company. Yeah, yeah. Which is so funny because I know this from an outside perspective, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, like, Andy will be in my wedding, you know, and... Wow. That's the thing that I think the most about and what I've really yeah. learned of late is like it's not so much about what you're working on in life, it's about who you're working with, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and obviously we have passions and interests and what have you, but I'm a curious guy and could probably get interested in just about anything, but if the people I'm working with, it's not right, that messes me up. So yeah. I've just had the privilege to work with so many amazing people and build real relationships outside of just like, the deliverables and getting the work done. Um, but on a work front and work perspective, I would say the K-Swiss campaign because it's 2016, 17, so I'm like 25, 26, with no experience, does it, like putting colorways together and them going to market and marketing campaigns and full trust from Gary. And that was Andy, D-Rock, and myself that really kind of spearheaded this kind of three-headed monster and how we got that out. D-Rock would do the creative, Andy would do the distribution and strategy in terms of content and what have you, and yeah. I really led the logistics side of it, like contracting and making sure everything was getting done and moving forward and what have you. And then, you know, it was all collaborative, but like the clouds and dirt, the blue, brown, the white sneaker, inside of the shoe, you know, the left one was the dirt on the insole, the right was the clouds. I mean, I remember coming in early at like 6.30 a.m., meeting Tyler Babin, sitting down, doing the Photoshop. Underneath, Gary signed and wrote 
um, you know, clouds uh, on one, dirt on the other, and it was, was his actual writing underneath a translucent sole. Um, oh, you know, the clouds and dirt in the, the colors on the each in you know underneath the tongue, and then and then we did the dark clouds. Those were existing silhouettes, so it was just about doing colorways. Yeah, so yep. we did we did about I think five different colorways. Travel the world, London release, you know, yeah. we, uh, Toronto release, what have you. And uh, but then for the fifth shoe, we were able to create our own silhouette, and that was that was pretty cool. That is a really bloody cool, especially for how much it would have been out there for you in your world. You probably would have been like, oh, that like you you would have seen it a lot out in the real world. You know what I mean? Rather than mm -hmm. being like, oh, I sometimes I'd do an email at Nintendo. I send it. Three million people see it, but I don't see anyone like reaction like, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's like sort of you've really removed, but that would have been really bloody cool. Totally, and still to this day, you see people rocking them, and it's special for sure. Yeah. Uh, what's the work-life balance for you? I don't really think of it like that. I just okay, think of cool. it as my life. Okay. <clears throat> and it has push and pulls and ebbs and flows. Um. And everyone's responsible for their own approach to that, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Okay. You know? um, so I've always just said, like, work plus life, or, like, the equation is different. Like, it's not how do you have work and life to make balance. It's, like, all together, if you will. Yes. Uh, I feel like you are in a unique situation where you can sort of have that answer because I feel like there's a lot of people that work for someone where they're like, this is just an X for X swap. You know what I yep, mean? Yeah. Um, I'm in that totally. Position. Yeah. I would agree with that for sure. Yes. Yeah. I'm in a unique situation in, in that sense. But at the same time, I do believe people, you can be accountable about like setting your own boundaries. And, oh yeah, definitely. And if you don't, like your current situation it's not on anyone else to change it yeah i think uh i think that's a nice uh that's an easy way to sort of think about it because there's so many other variables that come into that mm -hmm. like let's say you've got a kid that's sick and you're like i would love to change jobs but our insurance is not covered through totally that person you're like i've got to ride this out you know what i mean there's more variables oh, for sure um, for sure so but totally I do agree. think but that's what I mean is like the ebbs and flows. Yeah. Right? It's like if you think about it in a static capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the tricky way. Yeah. Because the more reason I was asking is because early on in the piece, it was like um, the mentality of like the Gary Vaynerchuk sort of stuff. Like and hustle. He would, yeah, the hustle. And like I sleep two, three hours a night. And then I would be like, well, he might be able to do that, but the people around him might not be able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean, um, <laughs> for sure. You know, I do think that the the sleep two, three hours a night thing, you know, and this is a very uh, conversation that's near and dear to my life as I've been through it. And yeah, yeah. Why Andy and D-Rock and I have such a special relationship because... You would all you know, spoon together on the couch to get uh, to sleep? More or less, but also <laughs> had these conversations at, at night about what was the right thing to do. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it wasn't, it's like, look, you know, this conversation has been so fun and reflecting, but like, there's also a lot of, like, yeah. growing up and tough times and challenges. Oh, you and know? I'm and, all about, like, if you get have to get in there and be like, hey, I have to work hard for like, three years four years to get to the point that i want yeah. and as you say ebbs and flows and sometimes like getting in doing some hard work and like you had the belief that maybe this would pay off in the end yeah i mean and, uh, like tears like i've been i've cried at times as to like yeah. not sure what the right i want to work less or i want to do this or my yeah. relationship's going to falter because of this yeah you know and like 22 23 24 we have an immense amount of work to do gary's like he's not slowing down for yeah. us yeah yeah <laughs> it's like you want to rock or you don't want to rock you know yeah. like 
and that's where I just mean it's like it comes down to people making their decisions, right? And yeah. I do understand yeah. that you got to pay the bills and you got all these different things. I had a conversation with a kid this morning, like, got let go. He's an insanely talented artist. Like, okay, well, you're going to get a job that takes you further away from your art, or are you going to do the art, or you have to pay the bills? Like, how are you going to yeah, yeah, do yeah. all those things? But um, you were just had started to talk about, like, the hustle, and now some more of the balance has come into play. Yeah, it looks like you guys have got more balance there For from an sure. outside perspective. For sure. Yeah. Um, and I think that just comes with time and age and maturity. And yeah. Obviously, Gary drives the ship. He's yep. gone through his own trials and tribulations with oh, all, all of yeah. this, you know? Yeah. Um, something that we always sucked at was, that affected us a lot, was like, it was just always on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah. It was just always like, cool, next, cool. Yeah, yeah. Not, not like, yo, do we, do we know what just happened? Yeah, even like sort of savor that moment for a correct, bit. Correct, correct. Yeah. So we got a little bit better at that. Um, and yeah, there was, you know, obviously there, were, there was a period of time where there's a lot of blowback towards that conversation, hustle porn, hustle culture, what have yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so you learn to be more thoughtful in how you communicate and, yeah. and, and actually try to deliver the things in the capacity and the context that you want. Um, but when I think about work-life balance, I will say this. In COVID, I went through real mental health issues and I've begun to really take up meditation in my life mm. and working out and sleeping. And so yeah. like... For me, that's why this kind of new, like, you either create the hardship in your life or the life's just going to give you the hardship. Yeah, okay. I, that's and, a, I like that concept. Like, my brain's getting it now. I, know, I heard you say it before, but now I'm picking up what you're putting down. All right. I so, like, like, I don't like waking up at 5.45 and going to the gym and, like, it's easier to then not sit there and meditate for 20 minutes and then make sure that I get good food and then opportunities that you leave on the table because you go to bed at 10.30 or 10.45. But like, mm -hmm. I damn well know that my stress levels and my mental health and all of that have come incredibly far down when I'm mm. consistent with that. And I definitely don't care to run 13.2 miles on April 14th for the first time ever, Ugh. but I'm doing it <laughs> because I... We'll let that be the thing that I don't want to do rather than another area. Yeah, that's a great concept. I'm loving that. All right, all right. I think I'm going to take that on board myself. I love it. Good. All right, all right. Um, all right. Um, what is something that you can't live without? My iPhone. Your iPhone. Yeah. All right. Does you feel yeah. weird to be attached to something like that, or is it because it's so um, work-related that you just need it? You know, I don't even honestly think it's work-related, and that's probably like – the cliche or first, you know, answer um, that I give, but it's more about, I'm sorry, did I lose you for a second? It's more about this. Our first communication was se September 15th, 2017. Mm. The only reason we're doing this is because of my iPhone. Yeah, that is and so I've true. I had the benefit to meet people all over the world. Yeah. And actually build relationships with them simply because of the iPhone. Yeah. And so I, to me, it's not, I don't feel addicted to it. And I don't feel it's simply about work. For me, I crave human connection and I really enjoy engaging and meeting new people, especially in the creative and art space. And at this point in my life, through work, through all these things, I have like the uh, ability to have a little bit of a platform to drive impact. And so none of that really exists currently without the iPhone. And that's yeah. just the serendipity of when time and life happens because, you know, people used to write papers and do, you know, it, it was other ways that it would occur. Um, but now just there's just so much scale to yeah. it. I mean, I can go to Toronto and yeah, and hang it's so out with instant five friends as well, right? in two seconds, you know, and people are receptive yeah. to it. If you're interested in someone, you yep. can reach out to them. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree with that. I, I am a little bit of a like a, 
I think my brain can get like the obsessive, like I'm gonna bop, 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 I'm yeah. like, dopamine, oh, yeah, like I, feel I need that the dopamine. dopamine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But now, yeah. what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Um, it's a great question. What do I do for fun? I, I'm trying to think the right way to say it because I feel like everything I do is fun in some capacity. Like I'm having fun right now. Yeah, yeah. I do you know what? It's hard because I do like um, illustration, and I could sit down for ten hours and do an illustration. But what I say I do for fun would be the skateboarding, except my knees and ankles have been. Yeah. There. But yeah. so now my obsession with pickleball is, I'd say that's my. It's almost like my escape from my like. Letting my brain be like, you don't need to be doing this totally. all the time. And you so know? that's where like my weird like counter answer is actually like my meditation. But that's not like, I don't think of it as fun. I think of it as like what allows everything else to be fun. Do you do it through an app on your phone? Uh, yeah, I, I use Headspace. Headspace, okay. Headspace. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it's predominantly at this point like – I've gone through a bunch of, they have like classes on there. They have all these different things, but I predominantly just do like unguided timed windows and I'm trying to stretch it out further and further. When I think yeah. about the half marathon, I think so it's much harder to sit still and breathe and try to not think about anything but your breath for two hours than it is to run for two hours. Oh, yeah. So well, if I can do that. The other side's super easy. I, I, you know, the longest meditation I've done is 30 minutes. A couple, I'll probably do one of those this weekend. Wow. Then it makes like, what, I got a 10-minute call like that I don't want to do? Like, yeah, I can. Nothing. <laughs> you know, but I also, I think the other question is like hobbies. Like, yeah, that's what I, I would equate what is fun to. And yeah. I just got back from an epic, epic trip in Jackson Hole that I went yep. snowboarding with my friends and my and my family on playing basketball tomorrow morning. I'm doing that for fun. But like I don't yeah. to me this is no different than that. Yeah. And this wow. is not work, but let's see what the, is the rest of my day like. Um I'm meeting with an a, a employee that I haven't met with before um at 1:15 in 15 minutes. I'm really looking forward to that. That's yep. going to be fun. Gary, we I produce his podcast. We've got an episode uh, this afternoon at three o'clock. I'm really looking forward to like the guests getting sat down, the recording button going on, it going live, and watching that show. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I got a meeting at one thirty about uh, VCOT and creators and um, talent that's going to be there, and like, yeah, I'm yeah. really looking forward to that call. That to me is fun. Five yeah. o'clock, my, one of my best friends in the world is finishing his first week in a new job, new career, 32. He worked 10 years running my aunt and uncle's liquor store, and now he just took an entry-level trainee job on Wall Street, and I can't wait to go down to his office space and meet him for a beer for at five o'clock to celebrate his first. That's all fun to me. And then yeah. I'm going to go yeah. home, and I'm going to clean up my room and build a little bit of Legos. I got this new Harry Potter Gringotts Lego set. Oh, yeah, sick. And then I can't wait to get my ass to bed, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so the no, fun I, thing, I I try to look at it as, like, it's all fun. Yeah. The, i very much inspired by your outlook on this. I think it's uh, epic. All right. Since we've got 15 minutes, we're going to have to crank through the rest, okay? Cool. Yep. I feel like you and I could sit and shoot the shit for a very long time. <laughs> agree, okay. Brother. What is your spirit animal? Hmm. My spirit animal. The first thing that pops into my head is a horse. A horse? Which is, yeah, which is on my shirt. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. Um, and it's because uh, my mother, like, I believe is a true horse whisperer and incredibly talented equestrian. And um, I'm like a mama's boy, like to the <laughs> OD max. <laughs> um, and so that's, that would be what I say. Okay. A horse. Yeah. Is there any time like a Clydesdale or just a, no, uh, any, any sort of horse. Yep. Mini yeah, horse. They're super special animals. Um, yeah. <laughs> Whichever one my mom has a great relationship with, that's what I would say. I love it. Uh, all right. For this one, what is something you say to yourself, I can't believe I've done that? 
I, I lost. I missed like, you for a half second. Oh, sorry, my bad. That's right. What is something you say to yourself that you can't believe you've done that? Like the um, the clouds and dirt shoes. Like you can't believe you've done that. Is there something else where you're like, my life. I threw the pitch out of um, the Mariners baseball game one time, the first pitch. Yeah. Yep. And if you told me when I was 15, like I'm not a big baseball fan, but if you told me when I was 15 that I would get to do that, I'd be like, there's no way. I'm in a podunk surf town that has like 600 people in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I really don't think about it much. Um, and a lot of the people closest to me like get on me about it um like i have an apartment in manhattan like that i pay for on my own and i have an amazing job and i've been to australia i've been to new zealand i've been to all throughout europe i am friends with some of the most talented people in the world like everything just being that, here right now like you having interest in speaking to me <laughs> so like i know that i can give broad answers at times but like i don't i think it's also hard when you've got so day. many good it, things like, going on in your else. life and that um, you've done so many amazing things to I like narrow it down that i have the relationship that i do with my parents and my sisters i have amazing friends i yeah, I live in Chelsea, Manhattan. Like, that's on crazy. my own. All like, on my own. You know, that is and crazy. obviously, people do things to provide and get you to where you need to go. But, and I got like a little emotional because I don't think about it. Yeah, and I yeah. have a lot of people that like tell me I need to be a little bit more like, under like, proud and. The things that I do. That's amazing. I, you know, I think if perspective can come out from when you are looking at it from an outside, be like, oh, especially when you're like, oh, I grew up around these people, and like, oh, this guy's been handed sort of things. You know what I mean? But then yeah. even your friends saying like, hey, you've done this. You've put in the hard yards. Like talking about the hard work you put in 11 years ago and doing that. It's not like you were just slid into that. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. pretty amazing. I love it. Yeah. I think everybody's got their own little story. It's the reason I do this podcast. And I think that finding the stuff that you can be proud in, even if someone else is like, I don't care what that other person sort of thinks, you know what I mean? It's like what you sort of find proud. And knowing after being to New York a couple of times now and then sort of seeing the price around there, I'm like, holy shit, you did well for yourself and that you did it yourself. Yeah, and I, I guess... I try to not take it for granted someone i was at yeah. the bar last night uh kyrie irving launched his new sneaker with his company anta went to the event uh and then his family was next door and we were talking and they're like where do you live they they grew up in essex county or the same county that i grew up in they're like where do you live and i said new york city and i said damn like, <laughs> you live in manhattan like you must be doing pretty well for yourself oh, that's and awesome I, but i don't it doesn't really register for me but the thing that I think about a lot and probably my true answer about like what are you most proud about is just staying in the game. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just being in the game. That's amazing. Do you know also I think and I like I, again we could I can talk forever I feel this uh, is that you're willing to be hungry still. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of people that would really get to a a level of success and then they're like i'm cool and mm -hmm. like i don't need to grow anymore or i only want to grow for this reason not once have i heard you go monetary like i want to be this you're like oh it's this experience it's this piece it's that it's the relationships you know what i mean i think yeah. that comes across to me yeah i i don't know i do think i i i I've had an amazing mentor in Gary for the last 10 years in a formidable period of my life that has taught me a lot about that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we can get through so you can get to your meeting. I don't want you to be late. All good. Um, 
who is your go-to person? My go-to person is probably, um, I would say it's two people. I would say it's two people. But if I got, if I just am going with one, uh, you can say two. Like, there's yeah. no fucking rules to this. You can... <laughs> <laughs> My sister's always like, you get asked questions and then you change the question. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, my go-to person is uh, is two friends, Jake and Zach, yep. that we hold each other accountable in terms of like life and yep. pushing each other and trying to be great. And then my cousin Greg that I was just in uh, Jackson Hole with. And yeah. I've known him since the day we can remember. And, uh, like, we could speak thousands of words by just looking each other in the eyeballs. Do you know what? I feel like that. I've got a mate, Sparkles. And we've been friend, best friends for, like, 20 years. And even now, like, sometimes I'll just get a message, like, love you, mate, miss you. And I'll just be like, fuck, he just made my day. Yeah. And so he's in Australia. He works for the company. Do you know Cedar Summit? The, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's like a high-end like outdoor camping. He's like Sick. the COO of that or something like that or director of strategy or something. I don't know. Some yeah. big wig doing that. Um, yeah. So he'll go to Colorado and we'll just meet up and not do anything. Like, you know, when you meet up with some people, like, oh, we're going to go do this. Let's yeah. go entertain ourselves. We would just be like, hey, you want to walk into town? Yeah, let's yeah. get some food. And yeah. we would just have the best time. And people are like, what'd you do? Oh, we went to Home Depot. Yeah. And people are like, what? we like, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, the best time. <laughs> totally. And, yeah. and that's how I feel with, with that crew. And that, that would be my answer. And I'm fortunate because I, there's a lot of different people. I mean, yeah, my yeah, mother, yeah. my father, my, you know, it's like. Yeah. It's like my wife. But, like, I can. I yeah. can go to her with just about anything. Just like, about anything. Yeah. But my two buddies, Jake and Zach, we're doing the – Zach's doing the full marathon. Two of us are doing the half marathon together. We daily are just, like, checking in and making sure everyone's good and, like, yeah. not resting on your laurels and doing the things that you probably don't want to do that, yeah, you know, yeah. create progress. Um, yeah, and then Greg, it's, like, just, like, connected in a different way. Like, yeah. That's when awesome. people are around us, they're like, what is going on? Here? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the latest Dune movie? Or like, no, the... I haven't seen the first one either. Uh, I just saw it because my fan, but they like do these, like, they got these secret little hand signals that they do mm-hmm. to like talk to each other, like, while they're tied up. And yeah. I feel like that's you and Greg. Yeah, You're like, like uh, got these secret, like, Ooh, and they're, they're like, oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> we just like, oh, in the last weekend, we spent four days together. There's like 17 new words and sayings <laughs> that came out. And like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and people are like, yeah. what the fuck is wrong with you? Two? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what's an unspoken social rule that you love or you hate? unspoken social rule that you love or hate like okay. the airplane um aisle seat middle seat window like the person gets the window the middle person gets the elbows and yeah the, yeah, like, yeah person yeah, gets yeah, to yeah, get yeah. up whenever they want that's funny the thing that comes to mind that used to get me but doesn't as much anymore was when someone would send an email and then text you and say i just sent you an email I'd oh think, yeah. <laughs> it used to. I'd be like, "Yo, like, I'll get the email, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> or like, just text me what you emailed me." Yeah, you know. Yeah, that used I, to be something that would perturb me a lot. Um, yeah, I used to do the thing like when I was an intern, I'd like my boss would be like, "Hey, get this to me quickly." And then I'd email him, and I'd be like, "Hey, Dave, I sent you that email." And be like, "Yeah, I got it." <laughs> yeah, like, thank you. you yeah. Know, like now you're bo- now you're bothering. Now yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. you know. But I, I, I will say I, I've come off that a little bit because I understand that times it just comes from a place of like wanting to over communicate and wanting to share. Yeah. Um, I think it's a wanting to like not to let it slip by. You know what I mean? Like, totally. oh, sorry, that got mixed in the thing. Oh, it's. Imp- I've got this deadline here or like I want to make sure that you got it and I didn't screw up. You Correct. Know? And you know that I hit the deadline because you might see the email past the deadline. Or yeah. What, have you. Um, what else? Uh, here's one. Like 
if you're playing video games in some you might Madden against someone like Yep. The winner stays on. Like Ah uh, <laughs> Winner stays on. I love like, that for a lot of let things. someone else play. You know, like until you take the stakes out of my hands, I'm playing. Yeah, no, I like that for we even pickleball. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. what were you going to say? No, no, no. I was just going to say, same thing, pickleball. Like, if there's like only like six people there and like you got to split, and I'm like, winner stays on, right? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> that should be the like given rule. Correct. Like, this isn't like, you know, that's, that's competition. Um, we were at a, a bar, Million Dollar Cowboy Bar in Jacksonville. They got four pool tables. We wanted to get on one of the pool tables. We go down and, you know, we put the quarters on the pool table. Yeah. They're like, ah, we're playing. And you're like, no. Bang. Yeah. This is how this works. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah. Then line up your quarters and how many yeah. games you're about to play. Like, and we'll yeah. pop on the end. But, like, yeah. that's kind of how that works, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. but that's that's a random one. No, I, li- I like that. Because those rules, like, I sort of think, like, it sounds funny, but those kind of make us all human a little bit like there's yeah. rules in australia where like um a lot of people wave and you're just like you drive down the street and if it's a little bit awkward you're just like hey how you going or if there hasn't been a car in a little while and you're kind of in like you're just like yep hey i acknowledge you're there you acknowledge like sort of thing and yeah. so i love that stuff and yeah that yeah totally. those little things me t- i mean likewise i do a lot of just walking around the city and just looking at people oh, and, yeah. and just giving them a little, yeah. you know, head nod. And, yeah. Do you um, know what I love to do is uh, if there's some piece of article of clothing or someone, something's doing well, I all I love to compliment them because I'm yeah. like, maybe they didn't get that. So there was this lady, she had like three kids on her and she had this like um, jumpsuit of just this like wonderful floral pattern. And I was like, dang, you were just killing it. So I just want to be like, hey, I know you're busy. But you're killing it with that outfit, and her eyes just went, ah, oh, like it's just amazing. loved it. It's I amazing. love doing it. Totally. And then if people re- respond with like animosity to it, it's like, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have never My had bad. that, honestly. No, it no. won't happen. No. You know, but yeah. someone might be having a bad day, and yeah. then you shouldn't let that affect. All right, keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. All right. I know you've only got a couple more minutes, so um, what are three things that you're grateful for? Uh, health. Yep. Um, the serendipity of just like the time that I'm alive and opportunities that I receive and, mm-hmm. and what have you. Um, and then my friends and family, the health of yep. my friends and family, the health, but the friends and family that I have, the people yep. that care for me in my life. Um, I don't take that for granted. Yeah. Not for a single second. That's amazing. Okay. Last question. Um, what, uh, you, little, last question. You have to wear a shirt with a slogan on it for a year. What does it say? One day at a time. One day at a time. Is that your clouds and dirt slogan for yourself? Yeah, that's that's how I think about life a lot right now. Okay, so more in li- like living in the moment. Is that Correct. what your yeah, yeah, like whatever you want is only a byproduct of today and your actions today and that's all you got like the only thing that whatever you want to happen in the future doesn't actually exist the only thing that exists is this moment and today yep and what are you doing about it and then those things are only simply a byproduct of that yeah i i agree i try and think of like not like five-year plans but like even with this podcast right like i'm got uh, very low subscribers. I'm stoked for every single person that would say, hey, I'm taking time out of this for that. Yep. Even the guests, I'm like, I've had people cancel on me. I had people like stop, like not stop the interview, but like after it, they're like, hey, my boss went, let me do it. I'm like, that's your time. Yeah. I'm not, I'm asking for something from you. Yeah, correct. Uh, and then, uh, so I try and be like, okay, if I just chip away at this, I'm going to get to the like, um, to the sculpture, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just chipping away. So. Totally. And that's, yeah, probably over the last, that's what I have in my Instagram bio too. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's a, probably a product of some of the meditation work that uh, I've been doing. Yeah. Um, 
but like yeah it's just tomorrow will be tomorrow yesterday's yesterday but they're actually pretty irrelevant compared to like right now yeah um well that's the 10 questions and so we've made I it through show you something real quick oh yeah yeah for sure you drew this oh yeah i made a animated gif of it as well uh, there was a, a, a incredibly fond memory and like that was just a very meaningful and impactful thing. Oh, you know, thank you, you sent it July thirty first, twenty nineteen. So that was almost five years ago. And um, yeah, wow. Yeah, I just did like. I wanted to show that because it's super cool and it's all different <laughs> things I'm into. Soccer yeah. cleats, the basketball, books, podcast, all of it. The little bear on the back. These are the K-Swiss boxes. They were, yeah. Yep, that you put on there. And then what's on top? Some coffee mugs. And you did me a proper. And uh, I appreciate it. Video game uh. controller because, yeah, it's just like 240 weeks ago. Um to take that moment to receive that is like super cool, super cool. And oh, I appreciate thank that. you. I was, I was so stoked that I think even, I can't remember how it came along, but I remember being like, oh, wow, we're about to do this. We're about to have this sort of moment together. Yeah. And then even since then, uh, just the small conversations we've had, like the you posted the dunks the other day, and I was like, oh, hey, did you see the Janowski like uh, epically laid it? Yep. Because that was about like how... There's a Michael Jordan wing and a Janowski wing at Nike, and yeah. he t- like he's a he's like everybody's skaters' favorite skater. Like so, my totally. favorite skater's there. For, he's that's his favorite skater because yeah. it's like chill style. And but I've got a brother-in-law that was wearing a pair of Janowskis the other day, and he was like, oh, "I just thought it was the name of the shoe. I had no idea." And I was like, "Do you not know this?" Like, and so I was like trying to like fill him in. He's like whatever so i don't care <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And i'm like this guy's so crazy that he had this and if you li- i'll send you the link to the actual episode but it's uh are those conversations that like just sort of like bouncing back and forth and your willingness to sort of answer that and just being like oh yeah and like i know like i'm like you're busy people stuff going on i'm like i'm not going to be like if you were like oh fuck i didn't get to it i'm not like oh you didn't get to yeah, it but yeah it's like just an easy chill but that's why the answer is the iPhone thing for me because yeah. those things yep. make my day. Like, I love that, and that's how we you like we have a real relationship. And by and large, yeah. it's been like just checking in on each other. Yo, that's dope. You're yeah. on that. We're over here, and seven years later, we spend an hour and fifteen minutes together on a podcast, like Jim yeah. and shooting the shit. And that's why I feel like the iPhone. Like, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. it definitely brings uh, well together. Well, I won't hold any more time up, but I will get an illustration off to you in the next couple of weeks or so and put oh, it up. It's amazing. on YouTube and it'll be on the podcast as well. And then uh, then you will get the like original um, digital thing and you can do whatever you want with it. You can get it tattooed on your face, on Hell your back. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I'll get it printed on some tees or some mugs or something like that. I really appreciate you doing this. This has been a lot of fun. It's been um, super fun. And you just let me know in terms of when it's coming live and promoting it and putting it out there and all that jazz. Oh, uh, yeah. Easy peasy. It's more that I wanted this conversation and I want to do an illustration for you. And it's, um, I don't know what it's going to be like. So I've. Literally, I'm in the middle of sketching another one, and I keep going back and forth. I'm like, no this, no that. So yeah, uh, cool. I have no idea. So I can't wait to see it. I'm always nervous. <laughs> I'm like, God, oh god, I hope be, this is not the time. You'll crush it. So. You'll crush it. <laughs> Looking forward right. to it. Enjoy right, the rest t- of the day, my friend. I will do. Enjoy your weekend, and good luck to your team on Sunday. <laughs> Appreciate it, Maddie. <laughs> see you soon. See you, mate. Have a good Peace. one. Bye, bye.